Hey everyone, it's Andrzej Krzywda from RKNC. Yesterday I recorded a video about going even driven and what it means and how the control flow looks like. And some questions appeared about going even driven related to whether it means going microservices or what is the server infrastructure required for such stuff. So let me explain that even driven doesn't require microservices. Even driven requires modules and events and modules they can be deployed as microservices but it doesn't really make sense in like most cases it's an overkill and so you can be even driven within a monolithic server one server one runtime uh, a monolith with modules we call it a modulith it's a nice name so it means a good thing a monolith can have some bad connotations modulith is a nice meaning so modulith is the way to go unless you really have strong arguments for the microservices maybe some performance but even with performance i don't really uh, bite that easily most people go microservices because they want their resume to look better or their ego is bigger um in short even driven is orthogonal to microservices those are two different decisions you want to go you can go microservices without even driven but that's pro probably the worst possible choice but probably most projects choose to go this way they have those microservices and each microservices depend on each other because they query each other a lot that's completely the opposite of even driven that's the worst case i'm really sorry for you if you work on such project and you can go even driven within uh, one module if and that's the best choice because you don't spend money on servers you don't spend money on people who need to take care of all the service infrastructure it's all very very simple and it's all very surprising why people don't go this way as the default um, but what about even stores or message buses and uh, do you need kafka or rabbitmq or whatever is the new fancy tooling around event stores and buses the answer is no, you don't need that because in most cases that's an overkill because those are external stuff and you want to have your events within your database transactions. It simplifies everything. So all you need is some way of publishing events in memory and storing events and storing events as part of the same transaction as you store other data within this request, for example. So it's important to actually keep them in one database. It's much, much simpler. You can go with external tooling, it's possible, but it just adds new complexity. For example, and I'm disclaimer, I'm one of the people behind Rails Event Store. Rails Event Store is a very simple tool. It's, it creates your data tables in your relational, relational entity DB. So for example, a Postgres or MySQL, and then it helps you with publishing events. So you just publish those data, structure, data structures with a name and it's all happening in memory and, and it's persisted and everything works fine. Everything is part of the transaction if you want it to be. At any moment, you can go with asynchronous background jobs if you like, and for example, for an event handler, that's perfectly fine. It's still much simpler than going microservices. So don't go for microservices. Uh, and I would say limit your asynchronous calls as much as you can, but some asynchronous calls sometimes are required. So build a monolith, uh, a monolith with modules, go event driven and decouple modules. So focus on your code base, not on your infrastructure and enjoy a simple infrastructure and growing popularity. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions related to those topics. I would be happy to um, elaborate on them more. See you later.